So I've been on YouTube for a while now, and I've covered a range of nostalgic subjects. It started with edutainment games like Mango Plumo and the Jumpstart series, then obscure Spongebob games, and eventually other fun stuff like things based on My Little Pony or Winx Club, which we all know is the greatest show of all time. But over time, I started to cover Spongebob Flash games, and yeah, that's kind of defined my existence on YouTube. One of my favorite videos on the topic was my Spongebob fighting games one. The games were fun to talk about, and I think I did alright with the humor in it. I'd say it's one of my best works. <laughs> oh no. I know that voice. That's the cackle of my childhood arch-nemesis, Polly from Jumpstart 3rd Grade. That's right, Lucy Lilypad. You mentioned the SpongeBob fighting games video, but you forgot a very important detail. Uh, no I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't forget anything. Nothing's wrong with the video. Nothing whatsoever. Oh, no? If you're so sure about that, why don't we have a look for ourselves? Gulp. On top of that, when you start a match, you better be in it for the long haul because there is no pause feature to be found. So, care to explain this? Uh, I have a perfectly good explanation for it, I swear. Of course you do. Tell it to the judge, liar Lilium. This seems a little excessive. Silence! So, Lucy Litigation, you stand accused of neglecting a pause button. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, in my defense, you controlled it with the keyboard, so using the mouse to click on the screen wasn't exactly at the top of my priority. Excuses! For this crime, I'll have you sentenced to a lifetime of playing the SpongeBob Photo Cross series! Oh no. Honestly, death would be more merciful. If you asked me, we shouldn't waste any more time. It looks like the jury's already decided on their verdict. Look, I know that this trial has already broken at least a thousand courtroom laws, but I at least have a right to a lawyer. And who in their right mind would want to defend you? <coughs> wow. I can't even insult you. That's just sad. Look, this seems like an easily fixable issue. Just give me a computer and I'll re-upload the video with the mistake taken out. Then this whole thing will be resolved. Mmm... Fine. But only because your lawyer is so convincing. So, without further delay, let's do this again. The fighting genre has always been a popular one in gaming, so it isn't uncommon for franchises to make their own spins on it. With something as big as SpongeBob SquarePants, it's to be expected that it would have its own share of them. When most people think about Nickelodeon fighting games, the ones that usually come to mind are either the All-Star Brawls or the Super Brawls that came before them. Today we're going to look at the SpongeBob versions that aren't talked about quite as often. So before we get to the other stuff, there's one game I didn't cover when I first made this video. It actually came out long before everything else I looked at. Since we have the opportunity to do this again, I'd like to give it a shot. This was called Karate Contest and was released by iTunes aka Snap to Play in 2004. That makes it one of the ultimate classics. We get this music to set the scene. As for the game itself, it's really basic. You click on a spot on either Spongebob or Sandy, but you have to time it just right for the other character to strike before they block it. You have to hit them three times in a row to garner points for a finisher. Then you can make your character win. You lose a point if you miss. This is worth playing to see all the funny animations. <laughs> Oh 
Oh my gosh. It's the meme. Yeah, this obscure Spongebob Flash game was influential enough to create one of the most widely used Spongebob memes. The sound effects also make this worth playing. <laughs> so now that that's out of the way, let's get on with the original video. Let's start with Reef Rumble, one that's fondly remembered by many who used to play it. This was made by Smashing Ideas, one of Nick.com's best developers in my opinion. They consistently released high quality Flash games for different cartoons, even when they had basic concepts to work with, so you can expect this to be pretty good. At the menu, we see a muscular Spongebob screaming at us. Oh no, please don't erase my name tag. My name is not loose. In the story, the Bikini Bottom citizens are fighting in a martial arts competition. The rules here specify no tentacle biting or eye gouging. You heard right, this Spongebob game specifically tells us not to gouge someone's eyes out. Don't you love it when cartoons teach the really important lessons? We're then given a choice between arcade mode or tournament mode. We only have four characters to choose from so far, but we can unlock two of them from the looks of it. Arcade mode is a simple fight where you can go up against one opponent. In tournament, you fight all of them until you win. Every fighter has a punch, a kick, a block, and a special move, but every special move is just a projectile that's more or less the same. The fighters are animated, but the backgrounds are taken from scenes in the show. We also get some crispy images next to the health bars. Our fighters so far are SpongeBob, Bob, Squidward, Patrick, and Sandy. Squidward is the only one in a different outfit than usual. I think it makes sense from a story perspective because he's probably taking it more seriously than anyone else. He heard the term martial arts has arts in it and decided he needed to master it. During every fight, the characters say things from the show. Finally, the moment of truth! Look at those guns! <laughs> Come on! Your score goes up with every hit you land, so you have incentive to play if you care about more than just winning the tournament. The code for the special move is different for every character, and some are easier to pull off than others, such as Sandy's, which is simply right right A. Then there's SpongeBob's, which requires you to remember more. But if you can, you can easily spam them to victory. Squidward shoots his clarinet and takes up a good portion of the screen with his body, so he's an absolute beast. Play as him for the best result. The more often than not, your opponent will block more than anything. They actually hold blocks for a long time, so if you just keep spamming the punch and kick buttons, you can easily beat them. Just like in Jingle Brawl. One thing that the game doesn't mention is that when pulling off a special move, the left and right controls are flipped based on which side of the screen you're facing. So if the instructions tell you to hit right and you're facing left, you have to hit left. Eventually, you reach Larry the Lobster, who makes for a great addition to a fighting game. He's fast and will land a lot of hits, but if you're persistent enough, you can win the two rounds required to move on and reach the final boss. You find it to be Plankton controlling a robot Mr. Krabs, but strangely enough, Larry is far more difficult than him. Just stay out of the range of his boot and hit him with a projectile until he goes down. But watch out for his laser eyes, because those really hurt. Once you beat him, you unlock him and Larry as playable characters. They're fun to play as, but everyone controls more or less the same. I had the easiest time with Squidward, but as long as you can hit the keys fast enough, you should be able to win it with anyone. Simple as it may be, this is a lot of fun. In a way, I actually appreciate the simplicity. There's something so welcoming about these lower budget games. It's short and sweet, but I love it. It would later be reskinned as a Fairly Odd Parents game when Smashing Ideas went on to make Fairies of Fury. So if you're a fan of both Reef Rumble and Fairly Odd Parents, you might get a kick out of it. So that was one SpongeBob fighting game, but there are actually a few others. So far so good, huh? Squidward was a monster in that one. Huh, <laughs> naturally. Hey, where'd my lawyer go? <laughs> Someone threw a ball and she ran after it. Of course she did. Good thing I have a backup lawyer. <laughs> Anyway, moving on. This one isn't in the traditional Street Fighter-esque format, but it's still worth checking out. This is Bikini Bottom Bust Up, made by Sarbakin. Like most Sarbakin games, this is a popular one. It's similar to the game Punch Out, but instead of boxing, you're showing off your karate moves. SpongeBob is the only playable character, and you have to defeat everyone else. You can do a left punch, a right punch, a left kick, a right kick, and a special move. You can also dodge by moving to the left or right. Your first opponent is Patrick, and as can be expected, he's the easiest one. Meters in each corner indicate how much health you have based on how many hits you take. 
You also have dots leading to a star along the side of it. When they fill up all the way, you can use your special move by throwing Gary at your opponent to attack. Your enemies also have special moves, but you can dodge them most of the time. If you're really good at mashing buttons, the special move might actually be more trouble than it's worth. You can easily button mash to beat enemies like Patrick who aren't very fast. They won't even get the chance to fight back. But if you switch it up to hit the space bar, you might give them an opening. We'll refer to this button mashing tactic as the Jingle Brawl method. But this won't keep you alive forever. After winning two rounds against Patrick, you go up against Sandy, and this one requires more dodging. You can still button mash to some extent, but she often uses her tail tickle special move and it can be a real game ender. Kicks are stronger than punches, so even though it takes a little longer for Spongebob to pull one off, it might be worth giving a try. Sandy can be annoying, but she'll eventually go down if you try hard enough. Then it's on to Squidward, the final enemy. Just like in Reef Rumble, he's a monster who will absolutely ruin your day. Even this one pose reflects how vicious he is. The strategy is to hit him with kicks as much as you can. His health goes down slowly, but you'll get there eventually. <laughs> For his special move, he turns into a tornado and flies into you. It's really fast and hard to dodge. <laughs> yep, this is yet another game with the Diet SpongeBob voice library. <laughs> like with Reef Rumble, you can also go for a high score, just in case you want to challenge yourself a little more since there are only three opponents. But one thing I neglected to mention when I last talked about this was the other mode. The one that's just a little harder than this. That's right, if this wasn't hard enough for you, there's a champ mode. The regular game already feels like a champ mode if you ask me. Now your enemies have black belts and are even harder to deal with than before. If you can help it, don't let them get a single hit in. They just might start wailing on you without stopping. Every so often, these Spongebob games will come around where you just know the developers were chortling at the thought of how much they would make kids cry. Why, Sarbakken? Why? But anyway, I can't beat Squidward, and I value my well-being too much to even try. So that's all I have to say about that. Oh, such a shame. If only there was an alternate form of yourself that was the exact opposite of you in every way. I'm sure they could beat it. Wait, what are you do- Ah! <laughs> Welcome back, Tiger Lucy. Now, tell us a little about this game. <laughs> ah, Bikini Bottom Bust Up. One of the easiest games I've ever played. You have to be smart and strategically avoid every attack. Thankfully, I am a genius, and I don't just mindlessly button mash. I couldn't imagine playing any other way. Squidward might actually be the easiest boss in gaming history. I'm having a blast playing this, really enjoying myself. Far more than I do whenever I watch that awful show, Winx Club. This boss is so easy that I... Uh... So much so that I... Um... Okay, this is frustrating. He never even stops blocking. I can't even lie about this. This is way too hard. Almost as painful as playing Jumpstart 3rd grade. Okay, that's a bit too far. Let's get you back to normal. Ah! Great, you made my alter ego comment on a game. What's next? You're gonna have Silly Lily Anna move talk about one? Hey, give me a this. Also looks like my transformation scared my lawyer away. Oh well. So, continuing with the video, this one is called Monster Mashup, made by Workin' Man. Patrick is a giant evil monster facing a robot plankton in a boxing match. Referee Spongebob announces the match, and you can fight Mecha Plankton by either hooking to the left, hooking to the right, or dodging. You go by Patrick the Great, because remember when Patrick led that massive conquest to build one of the biggest empires in history? What, didn't they teach you that in school? You also have to watch your energy because it drains the more you attack. 
It does come back, though. I like the animation in this, and it looks like you're fighting on top of a building, which is cool, but there isn't really too much to see here. Though it should be mentioned that your health doesn't regenerate with every new round, so this is essentially an endurance test to see how long you can last. This was made to celebrate SpongeBob's 10-year anniversary, along with a bunch of other Flash games made by different companies. Most of these were really simplistic, so it isn't surprising that there isn't much going on in this. But we've saved the most detailed one for last. This one doesn't have a listed developer, but they sure didn't pull any punches with it. This is called Bikini Bottom Brawlers. As soon as we start up, we can see this game looks really good. It's colorful, it's vibrant, it has that SpongeBob energy. You know it's about to be great. You can choose either story or practice mode, which is basically tournament versus arcade. Then you choose a fighter. I will admit, the fighter selection is a little unconventional in story mode. Once you select your fighter, you click the arrow to move to the next screen. I'm used to a prompt coming up to confirm who I selected, so it confused me at first. Each character also has five different outfits, so you can make them look as goofy as you desire. We have Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, Mr. Krabs, Squidward, and Plankton in a robot suit of himself. Talk about vain. Then in story mode, you fight through each of the fighters until you win. They're in a set order no matter who you play as. Before every fight, the two characters have a dialogue exchange at the loading screen. Most of the time, they just quote the show, but it's nice to see this attention to detail. You have three different arenas, which may not be a lot, but they are fun to play through. This is a platform fighter where the goal is to ring out your opponent. You have a jump, a regular attack, a special attack you perform by pressing Z, and a super special attack you get by loading up your meter at the top of the screen. All of the fighters have their own strengths and weaknesses, and there are definitely ones that are stronger than others. Like he usually is in stuff like this, SpongeBob is well-rounded. He's probably the second best fighter in the whole thing. His regular karate attack is effective, but his Z attack is bad because it flings him backwards without much control of where he lands. You might not want to do this if you're trying to stay on the platforms, but his super special move is great and it hardly ever misses. It also keeps in character with him being bad at driving. And check out the little dance he does whenever he wins. It's hilarious. You know what this calls for? I think we need to have a dance party. Patrick is horrendous, and you shouldn't play as him. Unless you want a challenge, of course. He moves very slowly, and his basic attack causes him to dash forward. You're playing a dangerous game if you dash forward on these tiny little platforms. Neither of his special attacks have respectable range, and it's really easy to dodge both of them. It's no wonder he's the first one you fight in story mode. He was basically made to be practiced on. But Squidward is a bit more complicated. His regular move isn't that great. I mean, it looks like this. What did you expect? And for his special move, he turns into Handsome Squidward, but not even his logic-defying handsomeness can make it effective. But he makes up for it with his super special move, which can demolish you if it hits. Few things hurt more than the sound of a poorly played clarinet. Mr. Krabs is alright. He has a basic regular attack, but he jumps for his special one, which means you have to time it correctly. You also have to time his super special attack because he moves in a zigzag. It does a fair share of damage, though. Unfortunately, he's very slow and has a pathetic jump. He actually isn't too different from Plankton. He's the final boss of story mode, but he isn't actually that strong. His special attack is similar to Mr. Krabs, where he teleports upwards, and for his special attack, he sends an army of Plankton... clones, I guess, to attack in sequence. It's actually really easy to avoid. But Sandy... now let me tell you about Sandy. She is so overpowered that it's actually unfair to the other fighters. Again, she isn't even the final one you fight in story mode. She's fast, her super special attack is extremely easy to pull off compared to everyone else's, and for her regular special attack, she becomes the hibernating version of herself and barrels into the enemy. She can run them right off the map in this form. It isn't even that much of a risk to her because she can easily stop herself from going too far. If this were a multiplayer game, I wouldn't be surprised if Sandy got banned from competitions. Now there is sort of a reason for why there isn't too much balance among the fighters. This was intended to be story mode centered without much emphasis on individual fights. Note how the designated arcade mode is called practice mode. Practice for what, you ask? Well, practice for story mode, of course. So each fighter was made to get increasingly harder, more or less. It doesn't entirely account for who you play as, but there's one other aspect that can shake up the fights, regardless of who you're playing as. There is a wide variety of items you can pick up and use to fight with. 
Actually, a very wide variety. Some of them are highly effective, such as tridents and golden spatulas, and others do basically nothing, like the ketchup and mustard bottles. I like the jellyfish because you can throw them and they'll sting whoever goes where they land. The downside is, it can hurt both fighters. Not so much of a downside when your enemy throws it, though. I also like these realistic fish you can fight with. When you hit someone with it enough times, it turns into sushi. But most items are simple ones you can fight or shoot enemies with. You kind of have to use your own judgment to see which ones do more damage than others. This is because the game has no indicator of how much damage you take during combat. The more hits you take, the easier it is to fling you over the edge, but it's hard to tell how far along you are because you don't get a counter or health bar or anything of that nature. But aside from that, I really enjoyed this. You can have a great time with these characters, and these stages are a blast to battle through. I even like the details such as the Tattletale Strangler parachuting down in the airplane stage. Also, check out the menu in the Chum Caverns. Um, excuse me, where is the chili pie or the much burger? So yeah, this game is great. All of these are really entertaining and worth trying out. They're all good in their own ways. It's also fun to make cartoon characters beat each other up. You can't go wrong with that. If you have any game recommendations, don't be afraid to comment them below. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory. And there we have it. I have officially remade the video and taken out my mistake. I think that should be enough for us to call it. Ooh, wrong. <laughs> you aren't off the hook just yet, Lucy Legam. You really think just covering your old mistake will erase it from existence? What do you mean? You literally said I could change it. You even sat here and watched me do it. <sighs> I only said that because of how adorable your first lawyer was. But it isn't enough. You're a super serious YouTuber and silly mistakes should never be tolerated. Okay, what if I just confessed to being really stupid and said half the stuff I say shouldn't be taken seriously? Then would you let me go? As much as I agree, you would have to provide proof in order for me to legally accept it. Are you kidding? Nothing about this court session has been legal. Yes, but every decision we make is specifically to inconvenience you. Ugh, story of my life. Can't my second backup lawyer say something about this? <laughs> No one can save you from your fate, loser, Lilium. I hope you're ready for a lifetime of poorly controlled boating. Now, if we can just stop right there. <gasps> it can't be. Bloom? Sorry I'm late. I got held up by a cute dog playing with a ball outside, but I heard everything. The proof is in Lucy's recording, back from when they were dark, Lucy. You have to be smart and strategically avoid every attack. Thankfully, I am a genius, and I don't just mindlessly button mash. If Dark Lucy is the objective antithesis of Lucy, then by calling themselves a genius, they confirm that Lucy is, in fact, unintelligent. I believe this serves as undeniable proof of my client's idiocy. Therefore, nothing they say should be taken seriously. Uh, you have got to be kidding me. Jerry, what do we think? I mean, uh, she's got a point. Whatever, not guilty. Ah, uh, fine! You're free to go, Lucy Cannon! But I'll get you next time. You still have a ton of mistakes you need to account for. Like how you underestimated the penguins of Madagascar. Or how you imply number two ate himself. Or what about the whole SpongeBob's Next Big Adventure video? That was a whole mess. Or how about when you neglected to mention that the PC version of Clash of Trident was completely ripped from the game Rampage? Seriously, how do you not know? Uh, should we just that? I mean, go? it was completely yeah, obvious with all of get the out similarities. Ugh, oh, like you have to be a complete moron to not even realize that. Or... Into the flood again. Same old trip it was back then. So I made a big mistake. Try to see it once my way. 
No offense, but can you please shut up? Sorry. By the way, when exactly are you going to cover the Bodo Cross series? You're joking, right? 